Good afternoon. Welcome to another episode of Logan's Devotions. It's great to be together. Great to be back again after an extended time away on leave. And it's wonderful, of course, to open up God's Word for another day and see what he has to say. We're turning through to the Gospel of Luke and picking up where we left off. Picking up at Luke chapter 10, sorry, chapter 9 at verse 57. But before I read, as always, let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for your word, which is rich and true. We do pray that you would bless it to us and cause us to be nourished and fed, that we might rejoice in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Luke chapter 9 from verse 57. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, Leave the dead to bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Yet another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, No one who puts his hand to the plough and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. Well, there's such a thing as is called easy believism. It's something I was actually investigating, writing my master's thesis in before I uh, stopped studying. It's, It's the idea that all that's required of you is believing in Jesus. And from that moment on, everything's just kind of going, going to go pretty well for you. It's not going to go be many problems. God doesn't expect much from you. Jesus is not a hard taskmaster. And, you know, he's very easy, gentle, calm and kind all the time, and there's not really any bumps in the road. Well, what flies in the face of all of that is the reality of being a disciple of Christ and therefore taking up the cross of Christ. We're reminded that earlier in the chapter, earlier in the chapter, Jesus said the following words. If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. And from that moment, we've been looking quite a bit at a bunch of negative examples of people following Christ. What I mean by negative is people making mistakes, people assuming wrong things. And here at the end, Luke kind of grabs four different people and lumps them together for us so that we can understand the true cost of following Jesus, what it really means to take up our cross and follow Christ. It's easy for us to say with the song, I have decided to follow Jesus. It's easy for us to sing it, isn't it? But have we truly reckoned? Have we truly reckoned with what the cost will be? We're confronted with a with three different people. The first comes to Jesus and says to him, I'll follow you wherever you go. Sounds noble, doesn't it? I'll be your disciple. I'll carry your cross. And Jesus says, Foxes have holes. Birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. And the point's very obvious, isn't it? The animals of this world have homes, and so do the people of this world, but I don't. It's not so much I don't have a home, as much as I don't have comfort. I don't have the comforts of this world that everybody else enjoys, and that is the lot of the Christian. It's not to say that we never have comforts. It's not to say that Christians can't live comfortable lives. But it's to recognize that as a Christian, to follow Christ means to forego many of the earthly blessings that many of the people of this world enjoy. Not because they're wrong, 
but because there is a cost to following Jesus. Because you cannot put your comfort and security and safety before God, before Jesus. And, and that's, that's a massive challenge for us who live in Western contexts. Because everything around us tells us to put our safety, comfort, and security first. We're so used to insurance programs. We're so used to alarm systems. We're so used to careful thinking. Not that any of those things are wrong. But we're so used to dwell dwelling in a world where everything's about safety, comfort, and security that when Jesus says to us, I've got nowhere to lay down my, our head, we, we are tempted to be offended. And so what we do instead is we seek to have both comfort and Jesus as our master. And we can't. So the first man wants comfort and realizes there is none in following Christ. Well, the second man, Jesus, confronts. Jesus says in verse 59, follow me. But the man says, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. Now you and I might think to ourselves, well, what's wrong with burying the dead? Well, there's nothing wrong with burying the dead. But you've got to think about this from a different context. There was a, a very important group of people in the Old Testament called the Nazarites. You find them in Numbers, in the book of Numbers. And just before that glorious section that contains the Aaronic blessing, we are introduced to the Nazarites. They could be men or women, and they were people that took a special vow. And these people were never allowed to make themselves unclean for any reason whatsoever. They had made a special vow to dedicate their lives and their time and everything they had to the Lord for his service for a period of time. And for that period of time, there were a whole bunch of different things they had to do. They had to not cut their hair and a bunch of other stuff. And one of the things was they could never come in contact with the dead, even for their own family members. They were not to stop doing their vow and serving the Lord even for the death of a loved one. Now, you and I might be tempted to think to ourselves, well, that's a bit extreme. But it's actually a question that's far more important than extremity. It's the question of who will we devote our time and energy and love to? Will we give our all to the living God or to the dead. And you can interpret this another way. You can think of the dead as not being the physical dead, but the spiritual dead. But the application's the same. It's the challenge of, will I lay down my life and follow Christ, even if it costs me the family around me? Even if it means I can't go to a funeral? Will I pursue cleanliness before the Lord before even burying my loved ones. That's a challenge, isn't it? But then there's one more. Another said to Jesus, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, No one who puts his hand to the plough and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. Now you might Again, be tempted to think to yourself, that's a pretty small request, Jesus. I mean, it's understandable, isn't it? He just wants to go and say bye. Wouldn't you want to do the same? Missionaries take the chance to say goodbye to their friends and family before they leave. Why can't this fellow? Well, you've got to question what the heart is, isn't it? Oh, I'll follow you, Jesus, but first let me. I'll follow you, but I need to. It's, un it's not unreserved, is it? There are reservations. There are things holding him back from following Jesus. He is not willing to follow Christ without reservation. But he wants to put conditions upon following Christ. I'll follow you, but... And we can be like that, can't we? I'll follow you, Jesus, but... My family is my family. I'll follow you, Jesus, but my career comes first. Or maybe close second. 
I'll follow you, Jesus, but I need this first. There is no room for conditions in the kingdom of God. You are either on the Lord's side or you are not. It's that simple. Which is it? It's a costly business to follow Jesus Christ. It's called a cross for a reason. And I guess the question each and every one of us have to ask ourselves is, are we prepared to pay the price of following Jesus Christ? We don't have to. You see, at the end of the day, we can decide not to follow Jesus today and pay the price in the life to come. Or we can pay the price in this life, follow Christ, pick up our crosses, walk the narrow path, and reap the rewards in the life to come. The choice is yours. Let's pray. Father in heaven, help us to carry our cross. Help us to follow Jesus. Help us to count the cost to make the decision and to march forth to victory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.